The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. A little sadness today at the offices of Duke and Duke. I woke up this morning to find out that one of my idols passed away, John Havlicek of the Boston Celtics, number 17. At the age of 79, down in Florida, uh, he had Parkinson's and passed away today. Very sad. Uh, Havlicek was uh, in college uh, the same time that I was. He's the uh, same age, and he played at Ohio State on the team that won the national championship in 1960. The captain of that team, I believe, was none other than Bobby the General Knight from Indiana University. Larry Siegfried was the other guard, and I believe Jerry Lucas was the other forward, and, of course, Havlicek was going to be drafted at the NFL, but at the last minute he went into basketball and became one of the superstars uh, of the game. I was fortunate to meet him back in uh, 2002 in Boston, uh, one of the um, old-timers things that the uh, hockey players and the sports guys get together. And we was, It was a reverse auction for charity, and Mark Douglas and I went back uh, to meet some of the people, and that was one of the people that I, that I wanted to meet, and uh, he was there, just a real... Really, really nice guy. Anyway, say a few prayers for him, folks. He was a real, a real gentleman. Anyway, let's move on and take a look at the German DAX. As you can see here, we're in this really tight triangle, um, and I believe we're going to break out to the downside. And the reason why I say that is I think that there's a strong probability here that we've made a top in the uh, – in the S&P and also in the NASDAQ, especially the NASDAQ. And as I as the, the beeper goes off, I'll bet you that's it, making a new high. And by golly, shut the front door and raise the rent. And there it is right there. We'll just take a look at it right here. Okay, let's move on here and uh, get right back up to something here. One second. Um, let's uh, have a couple questions, of course, for everybody, but I'll do one at a time. Uh, one that we wanted to cover, of course, is the lift. If you remember... Uh, when Lyft came out, we, we said we were going to follow this even though we were not involved in trading it because we've got that big one. Uber is going to be coming out in a week or so, and we want to see what it's going to do. But if we look at what Lyft did here, oh, I forgot to put the FTSE up. I'll put that up in just a second here. And I will cover the, a few other things. I'm trying to do a little too much this morning, folks, so bear with me. I just got a lot of information that I think is important. You'll notice the big ABCD on this comes down about 9% uh, lower down around 52.50 a share. That will be a three-drive pattern, too, on the hourly chart, four-hour chart here. So watch that. The bottom should be at around 52.40 uh, in the um, in the lift. When it when it'll hit that, I don't know. And even if it will hit it, but I I think it has a really high probability of doing that. Now I posted two things into the Tiger Financial News uh, Network's uh, uh, den today, and the first one was a book about um, uh, Richard Schaubacher. Uh, he he was the um, uh, his father-in-law was uh, none other than uh, was uh, Edwards of uh, Robert Edwards of Edwards and McGee fame, but Schaubacher was really uh, he was the father-in-law of of, of, Robert, of uh, Robert Evans Edwards, and uh, the, he did a lot of technical analysis. He was in the same era of Gartley. A lot of the patterns in there are similar to the ones that you see with Gartley. And, of course, uh, none of those uh, fellows ever used Fibonacci ratios because um, that wasn't really brought to anybody's attention until 1938 when Ralph Elliott started writing, and he was only around for a couple of years. He got quite ill, and in, in the, he died, I believe, in 1948. And uh, he didn't do very much as far as publishing, uh, but he did talk about the Fibonacci numbers, you know, 382, 50%, 1.618, and 618. He did not use 1.27 or 786. And um, that, I think, those are, of course, important numbers because they're square roots of those numbers, and that's why we take a look at them. Uh, the reason why that book uh, it was posted by our good good friend here, Norm Winsky, um, and it was about, the, because the, the book was edited by Don Mack, 
And of course, Don Mack was my good friend from the Investment Center bookstore there in Santa Monica, uh, on Santa Monica Boulevard, and he was the one that gave me the Gartley book in 1970. So uh, Dan, Don passed away about 10 years ago. Hey, we got a caller from um, uh, New Jersey. Victor, are you there? Yeah, how you doing? Remember you told me uh, BGG was doing like an ABC down or something now? It followed exactly like you said. Where is it going now? Open should it should have a pretty should have a pretty good rally. What is BGG? Would you mind telling me again? I, I don't watch no, stocks very often. It's, no, no, it's, it's a Briggs and Stratton. You put the thing on there. Oh, okay, it's sure, okay, yeah, something. yeah. It, it's hit so the now level. It's that it's two dollars down. So where do you, you remember? You hit it right on the now. Well, where let's do we take go a now? let's let's just take a quick look at it, Victor. Just it'll just take me a second since I've got it in yeah. my. In my program, it'll only take a minute, and this will give us a chance to get a few yeah. things done here. BGG, Opening, that's, uh, uh, oh, there it is, Briggs and Stratton. And is it going to be $2 lower today? Yeah, it's at the 52-week low, 11.56, it's okay. Okay, well, right well, the last time we talked, it was making a rally, If you, as I recall. Right. It was making it a beautiful was APC. Yeah. Yeah, now now we're breaking down. We're going to be heading down to. Or looks, let's just just draw this in. You're going to be able to see it pretty pretty easily, I believe. You're going to see it down here to about the. Uh, I think it's going to get down to about the uh, 1040 level. Let's just get this up here. But we had a a really nice Gartley pattern there. Let me uh, finish this uh, one second, Victor, so that everybody can see it, and I'll post it into the Tiger Den. It only take me one second to draw this in. But uh, we were, we were trading around 14 and change when we spoke the last time, as I recall. Right, right. You said sell it. Okay. It's, uh, it's finished. Yeah. Up well, it. Uh, yeah, that's right. It looks like we're heading down to. Uh, that same area so uh, you know that's uh, yeah it looks like it's going to go to about uh, somewhere around 1080 to 1050 a share is what it looks like to me wow, wow. hey what's that software you use can I get that that is, that is Ensign software it just E-N-S-I-G-N software it leases for uh, $50 a month and it has all the Pesavento patterns and all the other things in it that you use for pattern recognition. But it's a good charting package. There's a lot of others out there, but that's the one I've used for quite a while, and it's been uh, treated me so well. So, would you touch that? It pays like a five percent dividend. Okay. Well, dividends are beyond my pay grade, Victor. So I don't know. <laughs> so what happens when it goes down to 1040? I would be a buyer. Well, look at this. Over. Look at this on uh, just 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 give me one second since this is such a nice pattern. I mean, it's uh, it's going to be really nice. Oh, it's over in the time frame. This is going to be a three drive pattern. Let me clear these others out, and you'll be able to see the three drive pattern that will be forming when we get to that level. You'll see it right down here. Let me just get this up and post it into the room, and uh, you'll be able to see it. There's a really nice three drive pattern down there at the level of around uh, that 1050 area. So it's within a dollar of that. It should make it. There's going to there's be a lot of stops at 1150. When those get down and get filled, that's probably when you want to take a look at it. All right. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks for work. calling in. Right. You Thank betcha. You. Bye. Bye. Appreciate it. Okay, let's move on here and uh, talk about a few other things. We want to talk about the live cattle, folks, when we get back. We're going to have a little barbecue over here at the TFNN, 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I've also posted another article that Norm uh, passed on to us. It's about that golden week that we have coming in Japan uh, starting tomorrow and going through May the 6th. It's going to be the longest period of time that the Japanese financial markets have been closed in the last 80 years, back to World War II. So you've got to be really careful, folks, uh, because there's going to be some illiquidity possibly over there, and you want to be uh, at least aware of it. And that doesn't mean the Bank of the J Japan might come in and do something anyway. So just be careful. It's a sign of uh, something unusual. That's all we want to pay attention to. Probably nothing will happen this time because it's on the Internet quite a bit. Even the Chicago Mercantile Exchange posted something about it. So this time it probably won't mean anything, but the fact that it's there is we should pay close attention to it. Because we've seen you know, some really big moves here this week in the dollar, the euro, especially the, uh, the uh, Australian dollar. Uh, has been a really good one, and the, and the British pound has been really good, too. So we're going to watch and see how these things end up. But because of that's happening, we're certainly going to be aware of it here at TFNN. We'll try to remind each other every day that that's going to keep going all the way through the following Monday. So it's going to be quite interesting as we look at some of these things. Now, I posted the chart of cattle. This comes right out of the, the futures newsletter that I do every week. This was uh, as of Friday. Uh, and then you can see what's happened this week. And the key to this was the sale came in on Friday of last week. And the fact that the market could not open higher on Monday was a really strong indication that that pattern at the 78 percent level was probably pretty good. And of course, as uh, you can see, the cattle broke uh, quite a bit down to this uh, six cents a pound all the way down with that big wide range. That's most probably means it's probably going to go even lower. But uh, that's what that pattern was. Nothing more than uh, that particular, you know, uh, pattern of, uh, you know, going up to the 78% level with a lower top, and that makes it a, you know, really interesting pattern. Now, I wanted to bring uh, one other thing to your attention. I have to put this uh, this footsie up today because I, I missed it earlier in the morning, and you can see here that the, the footsie's had a pretty big break here uh, in the last day or so. We had all of those big things there. And uh, we'll say, we'll get this up here, you'll see. There we go. You see right at the, uh, 
uh, that 75 area. We completed a big ABCD pattern on the daily pattern, and now we've had a pr pretty good break. And I think that's what we're getting ready to see here in the U.S. market. And the reason why I say that, folks, is because if you look at some of these stocks that are having the earnings, in fact, the Amazon came out with absolutely incredible earnings, and yet the stock is up, you know, very little. You know, given the fact that how bullish things were, I mean, the analysts that I heard on Bloomberg this morning, my God, they were going crazy. It sounded like, you know, the IPO for uh, for Facebook. So who knows? One other question someone's asked is about Fibonacci numbers. How come they work? How come they don't work? You know, hey, folks, I don't know the answer. All I know is I see these things popping up and why they stop at these numbers. I have no idea. Look at Facebook yesterday, folks. It gaps up like what? Uh, yeah, up about four. $14, and it stopped at the exact, I mean, to the tick, at 198 and change at the 786 retracement of the high that we made on the island reversal way back in July. I mean, why did it stop exactly there? There are not that many people that know what the 78% level is. You know, <laughs> I certainly believe that. It's got to be something related to the, the normal reaction of what's going on in the market. You know, one of the reasons why I believe these numbers work is because it's all part, I haven't got that many students, Marshall, is it's all part of the DNA of which we're all involved because all DNA is based on these Fibonacci spirals that we see all the time. It just depends how our chromosomes you know, line up, you know, because that tells us, you know, where our relatives are and all that kind of thing. You know, that DNA, folks, is very important because it's one of the main reasons that there's never been a murder conviction in the state of Arkansas. And the reason for that is most people have the same DNA. I used to tell that joke, and I used to get a lot of... A lot of laughter, but this just an old joke. So anyway, let's move on here and talk about a couple other things. This British pound has held up extremely well, folks. We were looking at it. If you remember last Friday, we wanted it to get down to that uh, 29 area. We got down to uh, 128, uh, 68. We bounced a little bit, acting okay so far. Uh, risk on this now is very, very small, under $200. So it is acting the way it should. It hasn't bounced very much as of yet, but and we've had a little bit of a bounce in the euro this morning, mainly because of the GDP report and the fact that it was incredibly oversold here in the euro. And we've rallied about, what, 50 or 60 pips off the bottom, which isn't very much. And the most rally we should get would most probably be about 80 pips. That would be the thing that I would be looking at that. So that's it. So those are some of the things that uh, that we're looking at here this morning. I wanted to bring to your attention, of course, the um, one of the reasons uh, for this NASDAQ yesterday. If you uh, take a look at this NASDAQ, uh, we were watching it really closely because there was a perfect ABCD up there at that uh, 78 um, 75 level. The high was 78, 79, I believe. We broke all the way down to 77, uh, 90. Then today we rallied back to the exact 61% level at 73.40. Whether it's going to stop there or not, I don't know. But the key there is nobody else does either. But that's a very, that's a really a strong possibility that there is a top in there. We saw the same thing, of course, in the E-mini S&P, if you'll remember, that that was another one that we had the same type of a uh, a pattern for me. If you'll remember yesterday, uh, just, to, just to show you that big drop that we had in the um, in the uh, DAX today, excuse me, the FTSE, look what we were showing yesterday, folks, when it was making the top. Look at the beautiful little uh, uh, three-drive pattern up there right at the uh, 75.30 level, which was uh, priding. Please dissect uh, Jews for you. Oh, you want to take a look at the uh, at the gold? You betcha. We will be happy to. Gold's, gold stopped right at uh, the 50% retracement this morning. Let me get the uh, live chart up here, Mr. Z. Just give me one second, and I'll put it up here into the den so that we can all see it. And then uh, it'll only take me just to... A short period of time to do that, and then we'll get it up here. Uh, let's move it up here. We'll let's do the four hour. Yeah, let's just do the daily here. Oh, this is looking really good. We we bought the gold the other day, uh, yesterday, a uh, Wednesday, of course, and it's acting okay so far. Let's just uh, hold on. Uh, ah, shucks, just a second, Larry. Just relax. Just relax. Okay, we just missed the 61% retracement by half a dollar. Now, one second, I have to send this out. 
and now I have to retrieve it, and then it'll be coming into the den so that everybody will see it with a little luck. And I do believe we have a little luck working on us today. Let's don't be too, uh, uh-oh, spoke too soon. Is that it? No, that's not it. Yep, there it is. Hold on one second. Here it is, Mr. Z. We'll get it up here. Had an order to buy some more today, but um, we didn't get filled. I had the order setting there at uh, 1275 and a half. We got to 1276 and we've rallied 10 bucks. Uh, this is telling us that we've got a pretty good chance here, this gold making a pretty good turn. We've been waiting for it. Um, the 23rd was the day. If you look at the bottom there at the 23rd, folks, this is an hourly chart on a June gold. You can see that three drive to a bottom from the 16th of March, the 18th to the 23rd. Bada bing, bada boom. She's on the way. Billy Ray. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, going back to that Fibonacci stuff, uh, I posted a chart, the long-term weekly chart of uh, Microsoft. And as you can see, the high was exactly a 1.618 expansion. It's a weekly chart, folks. At uh, 130, 157. I mean, to the tick. 
I mean, how could that happen? I guess some people over there at Redmond, Washington, must have been locking in some dividends or stuff like that. I don't know. Anyway, uh, sometimes these Fibonacci numbers work. Sometimes they don't. The thing that you have to remember is they just as important when they don't work as when they do work. Because when they fail, that usually just means they're going on to the next sequence of numbers. And you don't want to get locked in you know, to something like I did with the doggone gold trade. This I'm not going to do anymore. I'm not going to get emotionally attached to it. And my attachment is gone because I just moved the stop to break even. And now we'll see what happens uh, with it from there. So that's pretty much what we're going to be looking at here. Someone's asked a question about how confident do I feel that this could be a major top. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a major top. I think we're going to have a tradable top here uh, in the stock market. It could be a major top because nobody's looking for one. And so that there's a possibility, but it'll tell us if it is. It's going to have one hell of a bad day here uh, pretty quick. I mean, it, that, that'll that really tell you that, you know, the door is uh, the door to the old corral has closed and not many of the horses can get out. So let's uh, let's watch that because right now it's doing nothing. This is just bouncing around, no volatility pretty much. And so it's really, you know, it's really acting extremely bullish. That's it. As far as the bonds, we had some nice uh, movement today after the report. Uh, first time the GDP, the market broke, of course, and then short rallying come in and the market snapped back again. And we went back above the 61% retracement in those bonds, which was at uh, 147.16. I believe we're trading a tad higher than that right now. We're trading at 147.21, uh, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So we'll we'll see uh, what's going to happen, you know, with that as we go through and look at regarding the grains, folks. One of the reasons why I have not I nibbled once. If you remember uh, early early in the week, I nibbled. It was last week, excuse me. I nibbled at soybeans. Um, because we were making a beautiful garley there, and believe me, I did not risk more than four cents in soybeans because it had to stay there and stop right at that 78% level, and it didn't. It stayed there for about 10 minutes and then immediately got out of the trade, and if I had had any sense at all, I would have shorted it because if it breaks below that 78% level in a strong downtrend like that, the odds of it going to 1.27 or even 1.618 like soybeans did is quite high because that it's like a magnet and you know once you break through these numbers on the upside they go higher once you break through the on the downside they go lower and they're pulled by those uh by those numbers to the next level. And believe me, remember folks, I'm a fundam uh, fundamentalist, oh my God. I'm a technician, I don't know diddly squat about the fundamentals and I stay away from them. And I try to think about things like we're seeing here with this uh, Japanese uh, holiday, the golden week, because that, that could affect us because that means liquidity could be well, there won't be any liquidity in, in Japan. There'll be some in other parts of Asia, but uh, Japan is the big daddy rabbit over there. So you've got to pay you know, very, very close attention to it for sure. Now, I wanted to show you a trade here that we really wanted to do on the short side, but we never quite got there. This is the... Uh, this is the hog market. Remember, we came in. I'm a southern fundamentalist. You're about right. You know, <laughs> I misspoke on that one. Yes, the oil, I believe, has topped. Uh, but this is just a we stopped right at the 78 percent level in the um, at the at the crude this morning, folks. It was 60, uh, 63.77 and the low was 63.67. We rallied 60 pips, you know, so stopped exactly, you know, right there, you know. Actually, you know, I, most of you folks, I'm from southern Indiana. I'm only, I was Terre Haute, Indiana, was only about 40 miles away from the where the Ku Klux Klan started. Not very proud of that, but it did start in Indiana. Let's take a look at this uh, June hog chart. We had that beautiful Gartley pattern, three drive to a bottom down there at 73. We had a little bit of a rally of about 27 cents. Um, a pound and now we're pulling back and it looks like I was thinking we might get if you see that line that I had there I was thinking uh, this is you know we've been down every day this week I was thinking we might rally early in the week to make a three drive to a top pattern there but we didn't and now we're pulling down so I believe we're going to be heading down to about 85 cents per pound in these June hogs that's the old high that we made back in November so that's going to be a really key level now, at any time, if the Chinese get, uh, yep, 
Evansville is where Don Mattingly is home, the old Evansville Purple Aces. Right across, almost across the river from Louisville, where we always travel the first Saturday in May. Uh, by the way, I have the winning horse in the Kentucky Derby. Be sure you get your money into me by next Friday, folks, because we got to get those bets in on Saturday morning uh, for the Derby. We're going to be betting the Superfecta this week in the Derby when it comes up. All you have to do is pick the horses finishing one, two, three, and four. Really a small task when there's only 20 horses. The odds are about... 300,000 to one. Anyway, let's move on to, um, by the way, I just mentioned that because uh, it, it was 10 years ago, there was a, or no, it was more than that, it was about 15 years ago, a 50 to one shot named Giacomo won the Kentucky Derby and the $1 Superfecta, in other words, if you bet $1 and picked horses one, two, three, and four in that order, that ticket paid $870,000. Now, it didn't pay as much as the lottery, but it has a better chance of going on. Yes, the uh, I, I don't know about the crash in the cryptocurrencies, uh, Ruby, but I do watch Bitcoin. Uh, we were up there. What what was the crash? Did it get down? Did it drop four or five hundred bucks? I don't know. Uh, how much did it drop, Ruby? I'll, you'll have to tell me because I don't follow that that much. I've never traded it. I just I just watch it for entertainment purposes, but. Um, I don't know how much. David, can you tell me how much Bitcoin? Did? Yeah, 500 points. No big deal. That's what? That's uh, that's nothing. You know, that's a uh, that's a 10 percent drop in that thing. I mean, we've gone from 3,100 to 5,600. You know, why couldn't we have a you know small correction? You know, we're looking for a 382 correction in that, and that's going to take you at least down to uh, 4,100, I believe. So 40, no, 4,400. So that's nothing. You know, and and I. I don't, you know, first of all, those exchanges, uh, I, yeah, let's change the subject. I don't, you know, <laughs> let's change the subject on Bitcoin, folks. We don't need that. Let's move on to something that we can, you know, pay sort of attention to. That's the real thing that we want to watch. Um, the uh, the gold, uh, let's get back to the gold just for a second, just to see, give a rough idea of where we are here. We we're trading about ten, twelve, fifteen dollars higher. We'll see. Uh, yeah, the uh, dude, Ed, I bet you you were. I bet you were on that. I bet you were on that Nasdaq at seventy-eight forty with a high at seventy, forty fifty, weren't you? <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, we've had a pretty good bounce. Uh, well, it's bounced more than the Fritz, uh Yeah, it's it's bounced seventeen, eighteen dollars, I think, which is the. Uh, the harmonic number in gold. We need the the gold's got to get above this uh, 1291 level, folks, and uh, that's uh, you know that's pretty much it. So let's keep an eye on that. We get above that, it's okay. The silver started to pop up a little bit. It's rallied better than 40 cents since Ruby told us on Monday when it got to that 470 level, right at the exact 61 cent, 61 percent, and you know, and platinum still looks relatively good. So. Let's take a break. When we get back, we want to go through and take a look at Amazon. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when
when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, we're going to take a look here at Amazon. Uh, as you can see here, we're up at right near that 78% level. You know, this is another one of the trillion-dollar companies, I guess. And uh, But it is, you know, it, it hasn't made new highs. You know, Google almost went made a, uh, a new high, came very, very close, uh, within a, just a few dollars of making a new high. That could be a potential for a double top. It's a little early to tell, but the fact that we've had all this good news come out and these things have not gone uh, crazy to the upside, especially with the news that we're seeing, uh, gives you maybe a little bit of an idea that maybe it's getting a little tired. That's about the only way you could possibly describe it. So keep that in mind. So they're just little patterns that we're looking at, but the key one, of course, was that NASDAQ making that big ABCD at making a double top and closing above the double top without confirmation between the New York Stock Exchange Index or the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the IWM, the Russell 2000. All of those mean something very, very much. Here is the, uh, you'll notice here, if you take a look at this pattern in Google, you'll see that uh, we do have a uh, modified, well, it's a pretty extended three drive pattern, almost at the exact double top that we made back in July. And if you look at this closely, there's a nice little butterfly pattern in Google coming in at the same time. Uh, please reshow the chart of the New York Stock Exchange Index with the numbers. Absolutely, we can do this. No extra charge here on Friday. And we'll get this up here. Now, remember, we did get up to hit that 78% level on uh, on Tuesday. It was the day that we went to the exact 78% uh, level in the New York Stock Exchange Index, just a little above 13,000. And uh, then we immediately reversed from that level. But that, if you look at this really closely, folks, if you'll watch this NYSE chart, you'll notice the first 78% uh, level coming between January and September. And then you'll see the second 78% level coming in between September and April. Folks, that's a 135 pattern. The one is in January of last year. The September was September of this year, and then that's the three, and then the five is where we are right now because they're both 78% levels, and you can see what happened from the one in September. We went from 13,250. We dropped, what, 24% in a matter of three or four months to make the, the biggest bottom that we've seen since Hector was a pup. 
And that dog's 14 years old now. So pay attention to these because this could be something very important. Remember, the New York Stock Exchange is the biggest uh, and the broadest of all the indices that we look at. They don't trade it. Uh, they used to. It was called the knife, but uh, they don't do it anymore. But it's used for calculating the uh, these mutual funds and ETFs and stuff that are out there because it is, uh, I think it's 2,300 issues of the most liquid and cap highly capitalized stocks in the United States, and there's there's uh, foreign stocks in there, too, that are really big. So we'll watch this uh, very, very closely. Another another person, something asked me that, uh, oh, Char Starbucks. Yes, uh, Starbucks, uh, they should be making a lot of money because the, uh, what was that guy's name, David uh, Einhorn? Was he the one that bought the, uh, put the big bet, the billion-dollar bet on the bucks uh, on Starbucks way back when it was 58 or something? And here it is, 76. Yeah, here it is. Hold on a second here. Well, I would tell you, I would have to be really careful being long Starbucks in here, boys and girls. This is not a, let's get this over. He bought this at uh, 58, I believe. Yeah, he bought it at 58 and had that big gap up. Let's just look at this. And now it's trading at 76. Let's, uh, just a minute, I got to put this through the mill here. Otherwise, it's not going to come out right on the uh, the chart for the Dan and Al will get all upset with me and I like Al and I don't want him to be upset with me. So let's get this Starbucks chart up here so we can all see it. Um, all I got to do is find the doggone thing now. That's the problem. Da, 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 da. Oh, Starbucks, what did you do to me? All right, bear with me, folks. It's got, I just got so much to cover that I I can't get it all done, and that's what the problem is. Is this it? Nope, that's not it. It's got that huge gap. I just don't see it. Where did I put the chart? Uh, dear, that's not it. Well, I'm going to get that chart up there some way. Uh, it's here. All I got to do is find it, and, that's, and there it is right there. Hold on one second. There we go. You'll be able to see it here. Uh, I think it was was it David I yeah it must have been David Einhorn that made a billion dollar bet when it was at 50 um, 58 bucks I believe is where he bought it um, ah uh, you know I've got that little red box there maybe that's where he bought it yeah that little red box that's there uh, he must have bought it at around 54 he put a billion dollar bet uh, as I recall I think that's why I notated that little red box otherwise I wouldn't have that in there and now it's trading you know almost double in price so that's a huge bet that's paid off and uh, you know it's still looking pretty good and considering you know the the Starbucks is going up and the price of coffee went right down to the sewer you know there, there was nobody wanting to buy coffee but uh, now they're starting to nibble a little bit on the coffee market so maybe that'll cut the margins for Starbucks but uh, he mainly was because of the Chinese I think they're opening two Starbucks a day in China, and they could probably do that for two centuries before they run out of those. Go, Al, you can call him Al. <laughs> That's an old joke. All right, let's move on. Uh, we had another question about uh, the uh, banking index. Uh, just wanted to show you there's another one that was uh, lagging the market badly, and uh, you'll see here that uh, we've certainly done that. I mean, this was the leader on the way up. It led on the way down. It made the bottom down there, that beautiful ABCD down there on December 26. It was Bill Ackerman. Thank you very much, Peak. I appreciate it. I don't follow those guys too much, but uh, I, I didn't think it was David Einhorn because I, I know him, and he's uh, the poker player, and I don't know who Ackerman was, but uh, we'll see. They all probably go to the same uh, country club, but, you know, not the country club I go to. By the way, we've had uh, we've had you know, lots of illegal aliens coming across the border here in Tucson, folks. They they rushed the border yesterday, uh, day before yesterday here in Tucson. Tucson, about 500 people. There weren't any Mexicans in the group, folks. They were all from either Guatemala, Guatemala, Cuba, Honduras. Egypt, there were a whole bunch of, you know, it was just from everybody. But uh, there's a crisis here in Tucson. I can tell you that right now. Uh, they've they've warned us on our on our televisions here to, uh, you know, to stay out of that area, which is down by Tijuana. So we'll see what's uh, see what's going to be moving on. Anyway, who knows? I try not to listen to that politics. Oh, my God. I tell you, you know, if it wasn't for Donald Trump, I think they would probably close CNN and Fox and everything else. They wouldn't be anything to talk about, for God's sake. You know, if they don't they don't even mention the fact that somebody is 
as popular and as, as wonderful as John Havlicek. No one even mentioned it. I saw a little tiny blurb, and uh, that's it, you know. <laughs> so anyway, we'll see how that works out. we got to pay a few bills here, and then we're winding up for the weekend. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good idea. All right, let's move on here. We'll take a little break here, 877. 9276648 Al says the lines are just jammed up today folks so you won't be able to call in I'm sorry that's just filled up uh uh there's just the lights are just all over the board there and we just can't uh, take it maybe next week and we will have uh, another guest next week that I think you're going to enjoy uh quite a bit we're going to have Tim Bost on and we're also going to have the Shane man the Wolf Traders coming out He's in the house, 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last Last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're going to be uh, taking a look here at this euro because we did get down to that key level that below that 1160 area, we bounce, we bounce back up to it, so it really doesn't mean anything. We're trading at the same level that it broke out to the downside, which is 11160. So it does. We got a caller from uh, Farmington, I think, New Hampshire. Charlie, are you there? Yes, I am. It's uh, Framingham. Lovely Framingham. Framingham. <laughs> okay, what can I do for you, my friend? 
Um, I don't know if you covered this already. I haven't been able to listen to the show entirely, but GDX. Oh, yeah, we, we'll, we'll cover it right now for you because, uh, you know, we bought that on Wednesday. It's acting really good. Uh, if you bought it, just put your stop at break even, and uh, it looks like it's got a real chance in here. So I would still uh, still look, look, the gold looks okay. As long as gold, spot gold, the June gold stays above that uh, 1268 level, that's about $20 from where it is right now, I think we're in good shape on the gold. But getting below 1268 would say that's not good. So you want to put your stop as near as break even as you possibly can. Got it. Thank you very much. I appreciate I hope it. You bet. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll I'll remember Far, Far, Framington. Where is that in New Hampshire? It's actually Framingham. It's in Massachusetts, just about uh -huh. 25 miles west of Boston. Ah, okay. So that's where you get the accent, huh? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Framing, little bit. Framingham. Framingham. I'll remember that. I'll ask, ask Tommy about that because he's from Boston. Hey, thanks for calling in, Charlie. We really appreciate it. But hang on to that gold as long as it stays above that uh, 1270 level in the spot gold. It's got a good chance, I think. You got it. Thank you, Larry. Make it a good one. All right, you too. Thank you, folks. Folks, we're coming up to a break here. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and live every day like it's your last because you don't know when that present's going to be unwrapped. May God bless. <laughs>